Join me, Burning Gamer, as we delve into the world of antiques, search far and wide for the rarest of novelties, the most prehistoric of merchandise, the most ancient of antiquities. This is Vintage Victories! Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. It is I, your host, Brooding Gamer, and some even call me the Dinosaur Man. It is a gorgeous April 24th. It is a Sunday, and like I said, it's absolutely gorgeous. It's currently 78 degrees, and it's not even 11. It's just past 11, uh, 8 after 11. So today, we are going to a big flea market called Trader's World. It uh, They have a lot of really cool things there, and I thought... Why not check and see if we can find any old vintage, it's not really, I don't even know if we'd consider it vintage, but Jurassic World, or hmm, Jurassic Park, and the Lost World, anything, figure-wise, anything, in packs still, I don't know. Uh, if we can find anything, it would be really freaking cool, uh, preferably something that's not going to be hundreds of dollars, because I, I won't get it, I can't get it, but it's worth a shot to look and see what all they have. So, why don't you join us as we go to Trader's World and possibly find some old Jurassic Park stuff. Come on! Trader's World to see if we can find any old Jurassic Park, any old Lost World, and maybe even Jurassic Park 3, which I don't really care for. But the whole point, ooh, that was sticky. The only, the whole point, as you can see, this place is very unique. A lot of fiberglass animals, and apparently giraffes used to be their favorite thing. Used to be horses. They had horses all over the place. So. Go ahead and face over here. We're going to start with giraffe building number one. Here's him with the giraffes. Uh, this is going to be a whole outdoor section. Really cool. Um, this is like across the. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, across the highway here, we have a place called Treasure Island. Probably do that on a different day, uh, depending on how quick we get out of here. So. We can find so when coming to flea markets this right here is the type of stuff you want to keep your eye out for you could just see a bunch of generic stuff that i'm breaking um but sometimes mixed in would be like an old jurassic park dinosaur or such it does not matter uh, as long as it is not completely smashed or damaged if we can find it that's cool even comes with a watch r2 watch um if it's not destroyed, then you have potential. I have to be careful with where I'm recording because I've already had one person get a little uh, concerned with me recording, if you could not hear. Or you could just look like a jolty on either one. Uh, but this, when you look in places, you would not expect to find something. Or also, if we find any Jurassic World pop figures, we will uh, pick some of those up as well. But it doesn't look like we have any here. Just some very strange characters here. So let's check out the next stall. I will probably only record if I find anything because I don't want people getting upset with me recording. Because like I say, some people get paranoid when you have a camera out and you're recording as you're looking around. So let's see what else we can find. So far we have had no luck. I found an Alan Grant uh, in a package, pristine. Looked like it was brand new off the shelf for $95. I, I can't do $95. So right now we're here getting some food. This place honestly has some really good food. So. Just like school used to make. 
we're not having much luck today. Uh, so far, I've seen a $95 Allen Grant in the package and a man wearing shorts so short that I'm pretty sure it should be illegal. I think so, so too. I see it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that, I'm glad I got that on video. That was great. So we're not done yet. We're going to keep checking out a couple other places. And I've decided we are going to go ahead and go... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Across the street to Treasure Island. See if we can get a little lucky. Well, we'll, we'll hopefully find something. So we'll check a couple more aisles and then probably head that way. We had no luck at Trader's World. They had the Kenner Triceratops and they had an Alan Grant. However, they were asking $70 for the Triceratops out of the box. And they were asking $95 for the Alan Grant. And honestly, the Alan Grant made more sense to me for being $95. Uh, out of the box Triceratops, even if it did have the battle damage attached to it, should not be $70. You're asking too much. Maybe if I had a lot more money to just blow, absolutely, I would do it. But I'm not. Look at my beautiful girlfriend behind me. She keeps hiding behind me, so she's not on camera. She does not like being put on camera. All right, so let's see if we can get lucky here. We are back at the apartment. And as you can see, I have two bags here. Leg on the couch. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to show you what I found at Treasure Island. I did not find these at um, uh, Traders World. I did not find these at Traders World. Found these at Treasure Island. I found both of these in one shop and this in another shop. Uh, I almost got two. Uh, this is definitely not a vintage item, but it's from a, well, it's from the first Jurassic Park movie. Um, and these are from The Lost World and the first movie, respectively. So, anyway, we'll start off with this one because these actually, or this actually is not vintage, so. But we got, well, maybe. <laughs> you can tell it's a pop figure. <laughs> Ian Malcolm, Target. Dr. Ian Malcolm doing his sexy pose. So, yes, um, I had to pick this up. I've been wanting to pick this up, and it surprised me that I didn't have it yet. So, I think I have John Hammond, Alan Grant. I know I have Dennis Nedry, and I think I've got all the others. I think I have a Velociraptor. But I think I still need regular Dr. Ian Malcolm. But I had to get this one for sure. 25th anniversary it even came with a protector as well so this is freaking awesome i absolutely have been wanting to pick this up he only wanted 25 well actually he was saying selling it for 30 but i talked him down to 25 so that takes care of that but these two items here um they're not in the best condition and that is what you expect from a thrift shop or from a, a flea market such as Trader's World and and uh, it, we used to be called Turtle Creek, actually where I got a pet turtle once, but now it's Treasure Island. Um, so yes, really cool item here. So again, not the best condition. So we'll start off with well in order of the movie. So we'll start off with the Dilophosaurus, and of course it is missing the frill. It does not make any sound. I actually haven't even tried to see if it makes sound. But everything, the mechanics all work. It actually looks fairly good condition. A little beat up on certain things, but nothing's fallen off. Nothing's loose. It, it really looks good. And I've, I've seen this particular dinosaur. She was asking 10 for it. Still need to cut those off. She was asking 10. I have seen these still in the packaging roughly for about I think the most expensive I found was three hundred dollars the one the two items that I'm looking for the most are well actually 
a few of the items I'm looking for the most, one of them being the Triceratops from this first series, which I did find out of the box, and the guy was asking $70 for it. I don't have $70 right now, so I think what I'll do eventually is when I have that extra money to spend, I will go back, and I'll see if he still has it, and I'll pick it up. Um, and a Parasaurolophus that, you know, the Lost World Parasaurolophus by Hasbro. Yeah, Hasbro. Um, this particular lady who sold this guy did have those. However, that was years ago, and she actually remembered it. I showed her a picture, and she goes, yes, I had it, but I just sold it a couple days ago, or uh, last weekend. So I missed it by a week. But I'm glad that I was able to find this at least, and I didn't realize it has a forked tongue. I don't know if, I don't remember, uh-oh. Uh-oh, there we go, fix that. So these guys don't stand hardly at all. So I think what I'm going to do is see if I can find, and of course there's the Jurassic Park logo, and I forgot that, I don't remember what the numbers on there were, if that was like the number dinosaur made or what. Even has the Dilophosaurus skull on there, which is cool. I need to find plastic stands, so that way I can set it up like this, and it actually stand. I could put it like under the chest or something there, sorry, under the neck or something, and just have it prop up. That would be awesome, but I also am setting it up on a couch. So that is the the uh, the actual first vintage item we were able to find. Second item, pardon me. This one I am a little confused about, to be honest with you guys. If I can get it out of the bag. We have the Lost World Ram Head, the Pachycephalosaurus. Now, as you can tell, the head is actually tucked in right now. And the unfortunate thing is with this dinosaur, it has, it is missing the battle damage. So I think what I may do is get on eBay or something and see if I can find a replacement for the battle damage on this one. Uh, this was one of the dinosaurs I was actually looking for. And of course, down here, let me see if I can zoom in or focus. We have Site B Jurassic Park, and this is 23. Again, I'm not sure what those numbers mean. This is where I'm a little confused on this dinosaur. So let me, let me fix his feet here so that way he stands. So as you can see, his head, let me get this bag out of the way. His head is tucked in, right? Usually, right on the back here, there's a button that you push and the head launches forward. I have looked all over the place online and everything I see has a button right here that you push. The original one that I had, that I actually sold in a garage sale, had a button right there as well and I bought I got my Pachycephalosaurus from Trader's World oddly enough several several years ago and in fact when I found him no I did not sell it in a garage sale actually I had to throw him away because I found him at the bottom of a toy chest and his head had come off and the spring mechanism inside had come unlodged so, or dislodged so the whole guy was broken he's got some some paint chips here missing but again in the, the top of his chrome dome here has some wear on there, but what do you expect from a toy at this age that has been out of the box? Um, so I don't know. Oh, wait, hold on, hold on. I think I figured it out. I think I figured it out. So the button is underneath and it's right here. Originally, they must have made a different version where the button was underneath because I could not find. I thought this guy was like a misprint or something. So right in this area, cool. So he does work. That's actually how he broke, by the way. I remember finding at the bottom of a toy chest, I opened him up, did that, and his head just went doink, kind of like a pen, like a broken pen. So yes, we found the Pachyce or yes, the Pachycephalosaurus. Again, I need to buy a, a, a like a stand, like a plastic something to prop him up. If any of you know where I can find something like that, I would greatly appreciate a link or something just to where when I start getting more of these guys, especially with like the Parasaurolophus and stuff that are probably going to be very front heavy, it'd be nice, especially with the Dilophosaurus as well, to prop them up. So yeah, those were the two vintage toys that we found today. I wish I had a lot more money to spend or else I would have bought that Alan Grant that was still in the packaging and I would have bought the Triceratops. I think I may go back eventually and see if I can find those. But we were lucky to find these three items here. 
Now, the lady who I, the shop that I bought these two from, she did have a load of other Jurassic World toys, but we weren't in the market for Jurassic World. We were looking for Jurassic Park. Um, unfortunately, she did not have the Parasaurolophus anymore, which is, which is a bummer. But I'm uh, probably going to end up finding that online. We may do an online segment where I go and try and order a bunch of vintage toys online. Uh, but that would probably be no fun. So I think what I'm going to do possibly this next Thursday, possibly, it is a huge possibly, I may go to a toy shop. It's like a collector's, a collection shop over by where my girlfriend works. I'm going to turn the camera for this one. And yes, I've got a headset on. I think I'm going to go to this, it's a little uh, collector shop and I mean they've got everything from ceramic characters from Disney to old McDonald's toys everything um, They he does have like a very small corner full of dinosaurs and I, I know for a fact I've seen this Dilophosaurus on that little shelf so I may see if he has anything he may not have anything to this extent this quality right here but we never know so it's something I'm going to look into so I do apologize how this video went. I did not record these guys, unfortunately, because um, I asked if it would be okay if I recorded. And the lady was so sweet, but she did request that I not record um, with her in the video. And unfortunately, there was no way for me to record these guys without her being in the video. So that is the cost of recording in thrifts in um flea markets you do get a lot of people as you can see at the beginning of this video uh who do not like to be on video and that's their choice that is completely up to them if they want to be in the video or not and even if they're just in the background that still makes people uncomfortable i had a lot of situations today at traders world where i was recording and people were coming up and i had there's the foot it's not in the footage but people were coming up and kind of like giving me looks and like you know shaking their head like and they were, they were uncomfortable with me recording. And these days, like that, kind of like that lady who asked us to leave at Walmart um, a few weeks back. Unfortunately, you run into that kind of stuff. These days, people are weird. And a lot of people don't understand, oh, I'm just doing this for YouTube. So don't worry. Um, they don't see it that way. So it is what it is. Uh, I will continue doing these, of course. Um, we may do more videos in the future of going back to Trader's World. Because the in Treasure Island, the lady who I got these from said she gets things every weekend. So it's worth, and I'm sorry if I'm like at an angle here. Uh, she said it is worth to keep checking back. And we will do that. But I think this coming Thursday, I will go and check out that comic book store where they also, or not comic book store, but that old um, hobby store, hobby store, toy store, whatever you want to call it and uh see if we can find so i'm gonna thank you guys for joining me on our first vintage victories video i think we were definitely victorious in finding anything i didn't expect to find anything these were literally the last stop last booth on our way out the door did not expect to find it anything and i saw the i saw the packy and as i was looking around i then found him and a lot of like i said other jurassic world toys they had an edmontosaurus they had the concavenator um, all of which were out of box, which broke my heart, but it is what it is. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video off here. Thank you guys for watching. If any of you in the Ohio area, preferably remotely around the Dayton area, have any or know of any comic book stores or anything that sells vintage toys, by all means, let me know. And I will gladly take a trip up there. Um, but again, preferably in the Dayton, Ohio area. Uh, I will drive outside. If I have to drive all the way to Columbus, I will. I mean, for anybody who's familiar with Columbus, I'll, I'll drive a couple hours to go check some stuff out. But of course, I like to call around first and see if anybody has anything. I don't want to drive two hours away just to find out, oh, no, I don't have any Jurassic Park stuff. Um, so yeah, it'd be worth knowing if there's other places around me to check out. So Again, as I said, thank you all for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed. I thoroughly enjoyed making this video. Um, so yeah, I'm going to go ahead and end this video off here because I really don't know how to end these off anymore. It just gets really weird and I start rambling. So thank you all for watching. I love you all. <laughs>
We almost made it through an entire video without me coughing or doing that <laughs> thing. <laughs> <coughs> Thank you all for watching. I love you all. If you enjoyed this video, a like and a subscription would be fantastic if you'd like to see more videos. I am going to be posting as many of these as I can without overdoing it. Because again, I would also like to be able to go into my other videos, my games and all that. I don't want my channel to solely be based on toys. Um, because it's expensive. Guys, seriously, I spent about $80 on everything total today. So this is yikers. <laughs> this is a very expensive hobby. And it would be great to be able to find another thing. I am working on, unfortunately, I just bring up toys again. I am... Haven't I ended this video like three times already? That's what I thought. Um, I literally just talked to the cat. Who is... What are you doing? Are you okay? Why are you so weird? Weirdo. <laughs> Um, I am looking for the captives, uh, brand for fallen kingdom. I found fallen kingdom dominion. I found at a Walmart, we were looking at a whole end cap full of the eggs, the captives eggs. And I was not interested in buying them because I did not want to deal with the slime. And then I saw pro C's, uh, video where he opened up a large egg, got a big giga, and he got a Therizinosaurus, and I instantly fell in love. And uh, I went back to that Walmart, and I walked around for, no joke, two hours. No eggs. I went to another Walmart. No eggs. I went to that Meyer. Generic Jurassic World eggs. They did not have Fallen or er, Dominion eggs. So, that's another place. If anybody can give me an idea, in Ohio... <laughs> Where to find Dominion or Jurassic World Dominion captives eggs. Like the big ones. I cannot find I cannot find big ones anywhere and it's killing me. It's driving me nuts. So if anybody can help me, if you're even willing to send me things, <laughs> I will gladly start doing reviews and stuff. Uh anybody know of any good websites that I can go to to find decently priced uh, vintage Jurassic Park toys pardon the hand there I have even gone as far and I can't believe I'm saying this to look into getting the demon Carnotaurus <sighs> he's expensive one person is asking about $299 for the demon Carnotaurus without the battle damage being included the battle damage I have found for the demon Carnotaurus Running at $399. $399 for just the battle damage. That is how rare the Demon Carnotaurus is. I can't even find the normal Carnotaurus from Jurassic Park without spending an arm and a leg. So, yeah. If anybody has any good website recommendations, any good store recommendations for old vintage dinosaurs of Jurassic Park and the Lost World, let me know. I will go if I can. If it's not three hours away... Lord knows I would even do three hours away. And the cat is reverse sneezing, if you can hear that. Are you alright, Binks? He's alright. Okay, for the last time, I'm ending this video. Thank you all for watching. I love you all. A subscription for more videos would be greatly appreciated. And a like right down below if you guys want to see particular figures reviewed go down below um i'm rev i'm of course doing the vintage ones right now so any recommendations of stores any websites by all means let me know i've tried mercari ebay and amazon amazon does not have anything they do not do anything vintage at all so it looks like eBay and Mercari are the two that I've checked out. So if you guys have any others, by all means, let me know. Thank you all for watching. I love you. I will see you all in the next video. This is Brooding Gamer signing out.